In our original design of Maximus, it always included a more robust heating system for both the water and the cabin area. And in this video, we are introducing the design of the new hydronic system. I originally just started out with a, a diesel air heater and an electric point of use water heater. Um, I had lots of batteries so I could run the water heater, but it really was not not ideal. It actually sucked. And I wanted to have multiple sources of, actually it didn't suck. I thought it did. Why did it suck? Because I got stuck in the shower following you with no hot water more than yeah, once. Yeah, every once that in a while. Sucked. Yeah, so <laughs> we didn't have the water capacity we really wanted. So a hydronic heating system it does a lot more than just heat water and heat the cabin. It, it also does uh, some more fundamental life support things. It's more efficient and that I can use waste energy from the truck engine uh, to heat a tank of water. So when we get where we're going, we can have a nice, hot, long shower because we've got lots of hot water. Um, so this system is uh, very difficult and, and fairly convoluted to, to see. So hopefully uh, we'll try to show you the concept and that will whet your appetite for trying to see how it uh, actually gets implemented. That's right. And we are sitting in front of the wet bay because this was kind of one of the big visual areas that's changed and look how empty it is. I'll yeah. flash a picture of the old everything configured in there before. It used, to be, it used to be horrendous. It was terrible to build. Uh, it was terrible to work on. Uh, now I think I've uh, gotten much better at that. And it leaked for like five months and it last leaked. summer. Yeah. We kept there were parts it. in it I really couldn't get to without disassembling the whole thing. And so I never, never actually finished the preliminary system. That's right. So Steve thought as long as he's tearing it out to get everything kind of repaired, he might as well just start, start again. over. The layout you see here on this table is are all the pieces that I'm going to be using to install my hydronic system. This layout is approximately similar to the layout on the schematic. And so I'm going to go through each part of it and kind of describe to you what the symbols in the schematic mean in real life. I'm start over here on this side. This is where the engine heat will be collected. There's two branch connectors here that tap into the heater hose hoses that go to the heater core on the engine and this is where the hot coolant is brought in here. Uh, Three-quarter inch heater hose is represented by this blue line here and three-quarter inch return hose is represented by this white line right here. You might not be able to see it very well. I only had two colors of masking tape. So what is happening here? So we're going to collect water from the engine as it runs. We're going to route it through here. This is the engine valve. When the engine valve is open and when the tank valve is open, hot coolant will go through those two valves into this, into the chlorifier entrance right here. And there's these two pipes on the chlorifier are a coolant loop inside of it. There's a spiral of copper pipe inside of here which transfer the heat from the coolant, hot coolant that goes in here. So coolant's going to circulate through this at about 180 to 230 degrees, somewhere in there is typically where my engine is running, and it's going to heat the water in here, and it's going to return out this line. It's going to go in hot here, and it's going to come out cooler right here, and go through a piece of 5 8 hose to this branch into the return path, and it will circulate back to the engine. So in the case where I've selected mode one, so on my, this is my control panel stuff here. This is my mechanical switch that's going to allow me to select different operating modes and this cable here is a 9 wire 18 gauge cable that I will run from the control center and, and this switch into this electrical box here that, to these electrical valves here to open and close depending on what mode I want to operate in. This is my control system for my hydronic heating. Notice all valves are closed. These valves all uh, control the flow of coolant into the water heater that, from the engine from the diesel coolant heater and to the cabin heat. They're all controlled by a simple mechanical switch in, in initial position. They're all closed. If I want to heat water with the engine, I can move to position one. Both the engine heat and the uh, water heater open. 
If I want to heat water with the coolant heater instead of the engine supply, I move to position two. In position two, the coolant heater opens, the engine is closed. If I want to heat the cabin with the coolant heater, obviously the water tank closes and the hydronic coolant heater opens. And if I want to heat the engine with the coolant heater, the final position is four. Hydronic coolant closes, coolant heaters open, and engines open. So that's the way it goes. Again, going back to the chlorifier, these are the two coolant inputs. I also have a cold water input here and a hot water output here. Uh, cold water goes in at the bottom of the tank, hot water comes out at the top of the tank. And you'll notice that there is a silver line that connects the cold water and the hot water because this device on the top of the tank here is a thermostatic mixing valve. And what this valve does is it accepts hot water from the tank that may be anywhere from, you know, well, assuming it's hot, it's anywhere from probably 120 to 180 degrees, and it mixes it with cold water. So whenever it comes out this line here into the distribution manifold in the wet bay, that it's never more than 125 degrees. I don't want to have any scalding problems, and I already, already do this with the system that I have with the thermostatic mixing valve does. Additionally, in this calorifier, this black cap here covers an electrical heating device it's a 120 volt, a 1000 watt electric heater that can also heat the tank using electric power from the battery, typically collected by solar power. So this is something that I can do if I want to, but this is a third method of heating. The first method will be engine heat, the second method will be coolant heat from the diesel heater, and the third method will be electrical heat. In mode two, mode two is when I want to use the diesel coolant heater to heat the water tank. So in mode two, the engine valve closes, the tank valve is open, but this valve right here, which is, comes right off of the pump from the, from the diesel coolant heater, this opens up and, fl and hot fluid flows from the coolant heater out the blue line through the pump, through this, through this valve, across the T, and it circulates through the calorifier heating coil just like it does with the engine comes out here, but since this engine valve is closed, the only place the coolant can go is to, it'll circulate back to the, to the coolant heater. This coolant heater is a uh, 5,000 watt Chinese copy of an S-Bar D5, has a separate pump coolant through there. It's originally designed to preheat an engine to allow it to be started, which is, in my case, is what I refer to as my mode four. So if I'm in a cold environment and I've decided I want to preheat my engine, I fire this up, the coolant pump starts, it pumps coolant through the coolant heater valve to here, and from here, this valve is open, but the tank valve is closed. So the only place the coolant can go is up through this method here, and it goes in reverse into the engine, and circulates through the engine, and comes back cooled off through the return line all the way through here, and comes back into the coolant heater. So that's mode four. Mode three is when the coolant heater provides cabin heat. In mode three, the coolant heater valve is open, the cabin heat valve is open, the engine valve is closed, and the tank valve is closed. So all of our circulation is now happening over here. I select mode three on my selector switch, mode three cabin heat. This is also, uh, can, has thermostatic controls for, uh, for anti-freeze protection. So what happens is, is coolant heater uh, hot coolant at 180 degrees it goes out of the, uh, the coolant heater through the valve, through the coolant heater valve, and in this case, because these two valves are closed, the coolant, uh, the cabin heat valve is open and hot water now flows up through a, a three quarter inch pipe trunk, which goes from the wet bay all the way to the top of my control column in the camper. This hot, hot coolant. The first two places that it goes is there's two half inch ball valves here and these two have a 3 8 inch uh, PEX fitting on them. So these represent coolant loops that will heat, number one, my gray tank. The next thing it can encounter is the same setup. This case is, is a second uh, line of uh, 3 8 inch PEX comes out here and this one takes a loop through the battery compartment. This is going to allow me to circulate coolant through the, through the battery compartment in, in which I'll not only have a loop of PEX tubing, but also probably have a fan on there to stir the air around. And the fan will be thermostatically controlled whenever the hot coolant comes in. There's a temperature sensor on the, on the coolant line. That, it, as soon as the coolant line gets above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the, the fan inside will go on. And so these are the two freeze protection devices that, 
the rest of this stuff up here, this is all inside the cabin, and so this is the stuff that actually heats the cabin. So two freeze protection devices and three, kind of one, two, and three radiators in the cabin. And so what I have here is this uh, dual radiator. This is a five inch by 10 inch uh, thin core uh, radiator be fed by half inch PEX lines. Uh, this is the supply and this is the return. Uh, what's unique about these supply and return lines is these are going to be looped underneath of my duckboard flooring to provide radiant heat underneath your feet in addition to the uh, fan convected uh, radiator. So this is a dual source from a single loop. In the case where if the floor heating is adequate, these fans can be left off and they won't add, add too much extra heat. If you need extra heat, you, you can, these fans are thermostatically controlled but mechanically overridden. So it, it would, if left alone, as soon as these pipes right here sensed 100 degrees Fahrenheit of hot coolant, they will turn the fan on and there's a mechanical switch to, to actually force them to off to disconnect them from the power if need be. This radiator, about half the size, it is a single fan, is it a five by five. This one's in the bunk. Um, this has, again, a supply and a return that will feed hot coolant from the coolant heater. The on the return side, this tank is mounted high in the control column and it's gonna be almost all the way to the ceiling. It's gonna be just high enough for me to get into this cap and it's got a 5 8 hose on the bottom and this is collects all the return water. So this is the return from the, from the shower radiator, this is the return from this radiator, and this is the return from this radiator, all collected up and returned back into the, well, you can see this goes here, goes into this fitting across here into the return path to the coolant heater. So the third heating device that's in the camper is going to be a ladder style towel heater. Uh, I could buy a towel heater. They were quite expensive. Uh, by the time I found one that I wanted, it was about four or five hundred dollars. So what I'm going to design is an eight rung ladder. It'll have four rungs and then about a foot space and then four more rungs. And from this, you can loop uh, clothing or towels through each of the rungs. Again, this, this whole copper bank will heat up to 180 degrees. So anything that you put on it is going to be very warm and should be able to dry adequately. It will also provide a source of heat in the shower area. So when you take a shower when it's cold outside, it can be very warm in the shower area. Uh, the shower area also being the door is going to heat that space. So when the door opens and closes, we shouldn't see a bunch of cool bursts of air coming into the camper because it's going to be very warm right by the door. Uh, one of the things I haven't mentioned yet is each of these loops has a valve in it. The shower unit has a valve on the top rung. This radiator has a valve on the outlet, and this radiator has actually has a valve right here somewhere. This is underneath of a cabinet, so this valve is going to be somewhere out where I can get to it. Each of these three valves can be used to balance the flow of coolant through the circuit to allow more or less heat to come out of each of the three circuits. The light blue lines here are half-inch PEX. The dark blue lines are three-quarter-inch heater hose. And as it happens, there's a, the return line here, this white line right here, this goes 5 8 heater hose, and it goes down to the floor, so about six to six and a half feet down to the floor to here, where it turns into three quarter inch. Fitting standards that I'm using is, is if, if you did this all with barbed brass fittings, I mean, recall, remember that this system is going to move coolant that is and upwards of 180 degrees Fahrenheit from the coolant heater and potentially 230 degrees coming from the engine. So all these fittings need to be high temperature tolerant. So in many cases, but I, what I wanted to use plastic fittings because plastic fittings are much lighter than brass fittings. So what you'll see here in the three quarter inch uh, heater hose loop, these are Pro-Pex three quarter inch fittings. Pro-Pex is larger than Pex crimp. So these uh, three-quarter inch Pro-Pex fittings fit uh, three-quarter heater hose perfectly. The, the places here I have 5 8 heater hose, so I have a 5 8 heater hose coming and going from the calorifier, so I've got to actually drop from 5 8 to three-quarters, and so this fitting right here is a three-quarter crimp PEX to a three-quarter Pro-Pex, which allows me to adapt 5 8 heater hose to three-quarter heater hose. In the return column here because this is all the way at the top and this fitting on the bottom of this bottle is 5 8 inch heater hose. What I'm using here is I'm using 3 quarter PEX crimp 
by half inch PEX crimp T's so that I can connect my half inch PEX from my heater radiators to my return network. And then right here, the same as right over here, I have a change in size from 5 eighths heater hose to 3 quarter heater hose. Uh, this of course does not include uh, some of the control wiring. It just it will get too confusing if that's the case. What I wanted to do was to lay out and pick every different fitting here knowing that as long as I have all the right fittings um, and I have enough hose and pipe of different sizes and styles that will connect this whole system together. Roughly speaking, I've laid this out again. This cargo right here, this portion of it here, this is under the driver's side of the cab. The coolant heater and this valve assembly and some of these some of these couplings are here. This is in the wet bag which is beneath my shower and all the stuff in the upper corner here is inside the the, the cabin. All right, that's about it. That's a little well, I hope that uh, explanation was understandable to you. This system is fairly robust. It uh, has a lot more features than uh, most other hydronic systems that you might see. It also has more automation than other hydronic systems you might see. Uh, my intent is to make it both uh, very powerful and easy to use. And the write-up of the system, including the schematic that we show parts of throughout the video, are included on our blog at workingonexploring.com slash tech docs and in the next video we'll go through the trials and tribulations of getting this thing installed all over the place in the camper. <laughs> if you're hearing this now you've made it this far we look forward to hearing from you on the next video please drop us a comment below give us a thumbs up all that good stuff we love hearing from everybody and we will see you soon. <laughs>